Hello, good afternoon. You're watching Closing Trades on ET Now. I'm Anisha Jain. With me is Ajay Sharma. And the closing trades are a lot worse as compared to what we started off the day with. We are firmly in the green, but from there we have lost almost 150 points. 21,750 was that resistance level that the technical experts were watching out for, and we have truly seen. A, uh, you know, a retracement from that level right now at the lowest point of the trading session. The bank nifty is down a good 250 points from the start of the day. Mid caps down almost 130 points. And as we speak, nifty has actually managed to break below the mark of 21,600. So acute pressure in the last 10 15 minutes. In terms of stock specific action, Tata Motors is one of your top gainers in terms of the contributors. So watching out for that one. While Reliance Industries, after that massive rally, is cooling off today. So we are seeing a bit of a decline there. Other oil and gas gainers include names like BPCL, HPCL, good traction in those counters. A couple of these holding companies are also in focus, so watch out for Tata Investments and JSW Holdings. These stocks are up in the green. And then losers include names like Vedant and Trend. Both of them are actually from the fashion retail vertical, so just wanted to put perspective to some of these segments which are buzzing around. But Ajay, I think again, the case is the broader market and the outperformance of small cap index because that index is firmly up around 100 points. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, in fact, mid cap index has just taken a nose dive. Correct. But otherwise, till the first half of the session, mid caps were doing well. And if you look beyond the, if you just look beyond the uh, index, one of my favorite index to watch is the Nifty Micro Cap 250. Have you seen that index? Not that actually has got a lot of stocks beyond the first 100 mid caps. Not the next 250, right? No, no, not the next 250. Next 250 are the very large cap, Correct. mega caps. But mm -hmm. there's a uh, NSE index, the micro cap 250 index. You see that, you, you track that index closely, it has a billion dollar plus kind of company, not mm -hmm. very small ones. Mid cap index has also erased all its gain. Uh, so the small cap index will also come up on your screen. Almost a percent gain coming in there. I'm assuming some of that would have skimmed. Yes, that's true. Okay, last hour of trade action happening there. But this is the volatility you should be happy about if you are looking at buying names. Uh, as uh, Anisha was talking about, beyond the index, the energy pack, overall energy pack, oil and gas companies on the upstream side, ONGC, Oil India, the downstream stocks also have done very well. Uh, gas companies like MGL are doing very well. And today we are also looking at the mid-cap lenders, you know, the Yuko Banks, the Bank of Maharashtra's, LIC Housing Finance, all those names come back in style. But there's a very interesting and a very vibrant market in the broader market which are doing well. We'll pull up a lot of interesting stocks for you. Castrol has come back. Remember Castrol, that boring lubricant company, Castrol? Mm -hmm. That has come back in style. And now the street is talking about how the company is going beyond the normal lubricant business they had, EV lubricants and many also. There are a lot of individual ideas which are buzzing in trade which we'll be discussing through the day. But uh, Kunal is here with us along mm -hmm. with Nuresh who will also join us. Kunal, uh, how would you trade this market? Well, on the index front, uh, we are still uh, stuck into this resistance band of 21,750. I think that's what Anisha was also highlighting, that that's a major resistance point for the index. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, we closed about 21,700 marks, so maybe there was some glimmer of hope that uh, you know we could surpass the technical resistance as such. But I think except for that uh, you know initial uh, move on the indices, we've not been able to conquer as such the 21,750 plus mark for uh, the Nifty. And I think that's a bit of a concern. Again, large cap stocks losing a bit of shine. I'm not seeing uh, major reversals for these large cap names. But I think the, la the likes of Reliance, ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, again, a bit more quieter. Adds to uh, you know, the bigger concern that the markets require push from these large cap stocks to continue to move up higher. So we'll keep a watch on this 21,700, 750 mark for the index to uh, maybe create fresh long positions on the Nifty. Okay, point taken. Uh, apart from oil and gas space, which is of course perking up, there are a lot of names from autos, uh, you know, as well, which is actually doing quite well. So Tata Motors, of course, one of the top contributors. You also have Bosch as the OEM, which is actually doing quite well. And Maruti is in focus ahead of its earnings tomorrow. Uh, Nuresh, your sense on this entire auto pack? Would you take a bet? Uh, so out here it is more like a trailing onto the and uh, riding onto the position because majority of these auto names have uh, continued to do well. So if you look at whether it's a Bajaj Auto or a Tata Motors, both have hit new all-time highs and uh, different segments as well. Uh, so the only name which I actually like out of the auto pack is uh, a one which is not much uh, in discussion uh, but has slowly moved up, which is Bosch Limited. The stock has slowly and steadily over the last few uh, weeks uh, gone up and today also it has hit a new 52 week high holding on in this markets as well. So if I have to take a bet in the auto pack, I'll go with Bosch Limited. 
Okay, let me just quickly run you through some of the stocks and news as well. And the earnings scorecard will come up for you first on the screen. Of course, we're in the thick of the earnings season. Subros was one stock which was seeing a big move after its earnings just a few minutes ago, a 10% rally there. Keystone, Strides Pharma, Par Industries, UTI AMC, that scorecard will come up for you on the screen. Those are the stocks which are actually doing quite well in the trading session right now. On the weaker side, however, of course, Bajaj Finance, top of the heap. Garware Technical Fibers is down 6%. Mahindra Logistics is on the weaker side. And then, of course, J. Kumar Infrastructure that just reported its numbers was also on the weaker side. Also wanted to highlight Orchid Pharma, wherein the company is one of the drugs, has got the approval from the European agency. So that stock is mighty excited. 20% higher logged in upper circuit and Ganesh Benzoplast. That stock has been excited since the time a market investor has actually checked into the counter. We did speak with the management to understand how the fundamentals stack up and they are talking about a growth of almost 80% on revenue and profits given the capacity ad addition of over 30%. In fact, let's listen in to what the management had to say because now the stock is up 13% uh, despite the rally that we saw yesterday and day before as well. Listen in. Now, along with uh, BWLPG, which is uh, the world's largest LPG company as of today, is about 700 crores, uh, out of which uh, GBL's uh, subsidiaries have to together put in about approximately 90 to 100 crores. And the while the capacity expansion in this is expected to be about 33% uh, of our existing capacity, uh, the what we are projecting is on conservative basis that our uh, top lines and our margins should grow uh, sub uh, substantially more than that. Even with a 40% increment in our capacity, we are expecting that our revenues and profits should grow by more, more than 80%. That's what our expectation is. We are looking in the next three to five years, like I said, to do this, uh, complete the LPG expansion. And apart from this, look at, uh, we are in talks with various organic and inorganic opportunities uh, to grow. That was the actual part which market really liked uh, in our conversation early in the day. 40% capex or capacity rise will lead to almost doubling of top line and bottom line. 14% higher. But uh, there's another stock which is gaining after the results. Nourish, uh, I would like you to check the charts for Apar Industries. It's a big HNI slash institutional kind of a stock now. But there's something common between Apar, 6.5% move. Uh, yesterday, Voltam Transformers, exactly at this show when we were doing the show, the numbers came out. And last week was, was TRIL. And the word which is common is Transformers. The numbers are transforming and so are the stock prices, mm -hmm. clearly. And of course, the fortunes of investors who have bought into those names. Where do you see APAR beyond the 6100 mark, Nuresh? So, out here, the cases, uh, the stock has given a fresh breakout. Uh, but the last three times the stock has come towards the 6100 mark, it has taken a pause. Uh, it was in start of 2024 as well as uh, back in November, as well as in September. So the 6,000, 6,100 seems a major stiff resistance. We've got the uh, results also, and the stock has not been able to cross that. So I would wait for a day or two, and then maybe after a pause, it could take a take out 6,100. But one has to be careful here. The stock has been a massive outperformer in the last, uh, say, one, one and a half year. From being a 1,000 rupee stock, the stock has gone up to 6,000. And it has... Uh, it is one of the overowned stocks. You have uh, almost 30% institutional holding in this company. So I'll be a little careful. The risk reward is not great as it was, say, maybe a year back on the stock. Taken. So that's about a power industry. It's not as lucrative on risk reward, but still, there might be some value on the table. Um, earnings are underway, of course, and the big one that we're watching out for today is Larson and Tubro. Uh, that stock was uh, doing quite well for itself, at least when I checked it last week. Okay, now it's coming under pressure. It's down about 1.4%. The big question, of course, is what happens to their guidance and the order bookings, etc. Let me take it across to Lisa to get a sense of what the expectations are from the earnings, because overall, the CAPEX team is something which is very, uh, you know, usually very active ahead of the budget. Uh, Lisa, tell us in terms of the earnings, what the expectations are? So revenue growth is expected 
to be around 17 percent on year on year basis talking about the order inflow that is expected to be flat and majorly it will be led by orders one in the international uh, business majorly the hydrocarbon uh, business that they have won in middle east now talking about margin margin is expected to be remain uh, stable at around 11 uh, percent and that is on the back of uh, the development project which will be offset by uh, the execution of low margin infra projects talking about uh, the pat the pat is expected to be, see a strong growth of around 30 percent on year on year basis and and this will be mainly on the back of financial leverage as well as lower tax rate. Uh, now, what are the key factors to keep a watch on? Will be the ordering slow down, the momentum that may slow down in the run-up to election, the Red Sea issues which may lead to exec uh, execution delays, as well as the divestment of uh, non-core business, talking about the hydro metro as well as Naba power and the new business segment that is solar as well as hydrogen business. Most importantly, all eyes will be on the guidance because the management had given a guidance of around uh, 10 to 12 percent for the order inflow as well as for the revenue it was at around 12 to 15 percent. Core margin guidance that was uh, downgraded from 9 percent to 8.5 to 9 percent. So all eyes will be on these key factors that we have to keep a watch on on LNT results. All right, so that is something to watch out for in LNT results. The stock has done massively well, almost 3,700. We'll take a short break on that note. But before that, actually, there's a big story brewing in the automobile space. Yes, that's my favorite car, Innova. And in fact, not only Innova, but many other top premium models at Toyota are facing trouble. Uh, my colleague Sumit is here. What exactly is brewing there and why are why is Toyota as a company into this kind of a testing spot right now? Sumit, tell us. This appears to be a big one for uh, Toyota. There's trouble brewing for Toyota across the world uh, and in India also the company Japanese Auto Major has uh, stopped dispatches of its three SUVs including Toyota Fortuner, Hilux and Innova Crista. They have diesel uh, engines. The problem relates to uh, output certification that was uh, detected in Japan and now in India also company has stopped dispatches of these three vehicles. However, company said uh, more the vehicles which are on road are not impacted by this at all. But it's an issue for which uh, for temporarily they have suspended dispatches of vehicles. Well, it is not the Volkswagen diesel case it looks like because Volkswagen diesel scandal was a pure fraud and that happened that time. This time it's still being investigated by authorities to what extent it is a problem. Uh, also, Volkswagen diesel scandal was across the world and this time it looks like certain units uh, in Asia and some other markets are affected by this. Uh, Toyota, remember, in India, it sells popular vehicle and it has a rebadging uh, re agreement with Maruti Suzuki as well, though it looks like none of these big engines are used by Maruti Suzuki cars. Uh, this can benefit uh, Mahindra and Mahindra and Tata Motors in the long term if the issues issue this issue particular issue uh, blows up further and denting Toyota's image. It remains to be seen to what extent Toyota is able to control it in India. Watch the Budget 2024 coverage on ET Now on the 1st of February. Let's take the discussion on market fundamentals forward with Kunal Vora, who is joining us, the head of India Equity Research at BNB Paribas. Kunal, afternoon. Thank you so much for your time. First of all, very good name, uh, a pricey paradise. How nicely have you named your report this time round? So is that a challenge you and your team members also facing in your conversations with your clients as well? Because they like India for a variety of factors with a big list, what actually valuations are pricey. So is it uh, working harder and getting for to identify names which are still attractive and risk reward? Yeah, hi Ajay, thanks for having me on the show. I think you uh, like said it right. Uh, that's a struggle. Uh, if I think about India fundamentally, there is absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, you look at a uh, strong GDP growth rate of 7%, CY23 next year again, 6.5%. You have very strong local flows coming in. Uh, almost uh, $2 billion. FII flows also have been super strong uh, after $17 billion outflow in 22. You saw almost $21 billion inflows which came in. 
If I think about earnings, uh, again, very strong earnings, consistent double digit delivery in FY23, FY24, and even FY25 looks like another strong year with uh, mid teens growth. If I think about global factors, again, uh, looking very interesting with uh, Fed rate cuts, uh, which should be positive for emerging markets. Uh, India is going to be included in uh, emerging market bond indices. So there should be some support for the bond yields. So most factors which we can think of have really been very positive for the Indian markets. But issue is that that's getting priced into a great extent. When we think about valuations, uh, valuations is where our concerns are. And it's becoming increasingly difficult to find uh, stocks which are uh, offering growth at reasonable valuation. Uh, the metric which we like the most is the gap between bond yields and earning yield. And that's been a fairly accurate predictor of future returns. In the past, whenever we've seen this level of gap between bond yield and earning yield, historically, the returns have not been strong. So we've seen this in 2010, 2014, 2018. 2022 was an exception, but again, like say, uh, bond yield earning yield gap is up upwards of 2%, which uh, makes us a little concerned about uh, valuation and uh, near-term returns. That you're actually expecting only high single-digit return on the index level because of this argument. Does it also apply to a broader market as well, or largely the large caps would give, uh, likely to give the, those kind of returns, but broader markets may offer a slight alpha over that? Uh, in fact, our view is different. We believe that uh, like what's done much better compared to the broader market, like compared to the Nifty, is uh, broader markets. We've seen uh, mid-cap index giving almost 45% returns in CY23. Uh, small caps did even better, upwards of 50%. Uh, Nifty was, on the other hand, like lower at 20%. We believe that uh, this could be a year in which you could see higher returns from Nifty compared to mid and small caps, which would imply that uh, mid and small caps could see consolidation during the year. Okay, so there could be consolidation in the broader markets. Hi, Kunal, this is Anisha joining the conversation as well. I understand that your Nifty target for the end of the year is around 23,500, a 10% move from here. But, that, but for that to happen, you of course have to make sure that financial sector moves as well, right? And the private banking names have been the key underperformers. What do you think um, needs? Uh, what do you think the sector needs as a trigger, and why the underperformance? Yeah, that's uh, the like place which we see value in right now. Uh, financials have, especially private banks, have got like the best fundamental indicates. We've seen uh, very strong credit growth, which is sustaining. There has been concern regarding the margins, which have disappointed a bit in uh, recent uh, quarters. But we believe we are coming to the bottom of that and. Uh, in FY25 and more so in FY26, we see a fairly strong earnings rebound. And uh, along with attractive valuation, strong corporate balance sheet, strong bank balance sheet, very reasonable valuations and improvement in margins going forward, it, it might take a couple of more quarters. But I think uh, banks are uh, well poised for a fairly strong uh, year. And like that's where we see value right now. Out of all, this, all the uh, sector that you track, which ones would you have the highest amount of earnings growth over the next 12 to 24 months in your view? So over the next 12 to 24 months, I think banks is one sector which should do well. Uh, broadly, consumption as a theme, I believe would, would be fairly weak. In IT, we believe there could be a turnaround. IT is uh, close to getting bottoming out and we believe that IT could st start seeing a recovery in earnings. Uh, and uh, industrials, defense, etc., these stocks could continue to see, see fairly strong earnings growth. Having said that, uh, in certain cases, while earnings delivery might still be healthy, uh, we believe that uh, the valuations have already moved ahead of fundamentals, and uh, there might not be a strong correlation between earnings and valuations across sectors. Um, Kunal, there seems to be a bit of an anti-consensus call on pharma and IT. Pharma, you're actually worried about, so you're underweight there where the rest of the, you know, uh, rest of the experts are actually moving towards it. And IT, you do prefer. IT, I understand, could be a value case, but why not pharma? Yeah, in pharma, like we are selective. We like healthcare, we like diagnostics. But uh, in pharma, we believe that uh, generics uh, right now, whatever growth we are seeing, is being driven by one of opportunities. Uh, so pharma, generics, US generics not really doing very well. Even the Indian pharma market, the growth rates are still in high single digits, which is good but not great. In that context, where the valuations are and the kind of 
year which you had in 23 pharma had a fairly strong year we believe that this sector could uh, be an underperformer in 2024 within pharma diagnostic and hospitals is something which you are positive on uh, i want to understand are you not facing challenges in looking at hospital space because sure you, one can say that the representation of hospitals in the market is only going up now almost half a dozen new hospital stocks available but still the the the, the bigger ones uh, the leaders are still trading at a, you know premium valuation so is it also a uh, do you like that space are you open to coming down the market cap curve in hospitals or you'll stick to the big ones yeah i mean like say in certain cases where the opportunity is large and uh, pharma like say hospitals actually happens to be a part of our affluent india play we are okay to pay up. I mean, while we prefer growth at a reasonable valuation in certain sectors where there is opportunity for higher level of penetration, there is opportunity to expand business and the structural growth story is strong. In that case, we are okay with uh, lower market caps as well as the uh, fairly like high valuation multiples. That note, we let you go. Got you on a bit of a scratchy line, but uh, good to speak with you and interesting thoughts there. But for the markets right now, there is a bit of a slip happening. We are seeing that we are just below that 21,550 mark. Uh, Nuresh, what do you make of this, This uh, you know, almost a half a percent cut coming in the last 20, 30 minutes itself? So volatility is at play. And say yesterday it was Reliance, which uh, gave a 150-pointed uptick. Today that's giving a 50-pointed downtick. And we have banks not uh, taking a similar hit. Uh, the mid cap and the small cap indices almost went back to previous all time highs. So, as of now, uh, the same view remains on the index. We are trying to form a, a range out here, wherein 21,200 uh, to 21,300 on the downside, 21,800 on the upside remains the range for the Nifty. Same way for the bank Nifty as well. So, for now, time to be more stock specific uh, rather than index specific. Unless uh, we cross 21,800 in the GFE, that creates a momentum shift. Again, thanks so much, Nuresh, for highlighting that. So that's a volatility at play. But the earnings for Adani Total Gas had just come. We also have Mr. Suresh Manglani, the executive director and CEO, joining us to help us decode the earnings. It looks like it's a decent and a modest set. But can you help us understand what are the key drivers of this result? What really led to that? And more importantly, what's the outlook on the CGD sector now? Thank you. Thank you for inviting Adani Total Gas in your channel. I think just to give you a very brief summary that Adani Total Gas has delivered overall 13% growth in the volume terms on a nine-month basis and 21% on a quarter basis. On a CNG side, which is a major segment in our business, we have delivered 21% growth on nine-month basis and 24% growth on the quarter basis. In terms of EBITDA, our EBITDA has grown to 301 crore for this quarter, which is 26% higher on quarter on quarter of the previous year. Coming to the drivers, uh, I think primarily the vision of our chairman, Gautam Bhai is to continuously and accelerate uh, the infrastructure development. So that is what we have been doing, growing CNG and PNG infrastructure across our all geographical area. That's one major drive. Second drive, of course, is India's growth story, which has helped us to grow more and more volume. Third, of course, is supportive policies, uh, which MOPNG and PNGRB and other authorities are developing to grow share of natural gas from 6% to 15%. And lastly, of course, our focus on customer centricity to offer uh, to the needs of a customer. These have been the critical drivers. Our, of course, uh, our eyes on OPEX has also helped us to make sure that our EBITDA number grows uh, on a healthy side. Mr. Miglani, government has set the target of almost 5% blending of biogas in CGD pipelines. How do you see this development and how meaningful could it be as an opportunity for your own bio business? This is a great question. You know, for India to be self-reliant, India to be more sustainable, or India to support the climate change cause. I think this is, as the government has been taking several steps for a self-reliance, this is a step in right direction. It is a good step for CBG sector. Uh, and you are aware that Adani Total Gas is also 
into the business of manufacturing CBG and setting up CBG plant. So I think it would help us to uh, uh, comply with this new guidelines of CBG blending with our CGD volume. Uh, though, so this CBG manufacturing will help us ATGL, but also we will ensure that we help our other CGD friends to uh, to comply with the guidelines of 5% and we could provide more and more CBG. So overall, this is a good development for country as well as for a CBG sector. I also wanted to shift focus, Mr. Manglani, and talk about the LNG part of your business because um, analysts have been talking about how in 2026, 2027, there is a possibility of a supply glut because of the increased capacity globally. What do you think will be the impact on the Indian gas markets and for yourself? So, uh, again, a good question. I think uh, if you see India is any, uh, already a beneficiary of increase in the domestic gas production, Government policies on the upstream side is have started helping. We are seeing regular bidding of HPHT and other gas coming on in India. We are also seeing uh, RLNG terminals, uh, more and more terminals coming up on existing terminals, enhancing the capacity. National gas grid is expanding up to the northeast and Jammu Kashmir. Uh, and CGD networks are expanding pan India. I think this is one of the extremely good story for India that we are holistically growing across upstream, midstream, and downstream. So globally, when we are seeing later part of a 25, 26 LNG uh, supply is appears to be on excess side, this is going to be beneficial for India because India is developing the required infrastructure to receive this excess gas. And for end consumer and the CGD industries who are supplying gas to the last mile connectivity, this is again a very positive uh, development that we would receive more and more domestic gas production. We are receiving more uh, LNG coming to India and that provides us flexibility to achieve better terms and better price so that we can serve large masses of customers on both PNG and CNG side. Uh, you know, we are also witnessing that LNG as fuel for transportation is getting much more acceptance and it's gaining tra traction uh, in industrial side of the economy as well, uh, across sectors. So can you see, can you tell us how, what kind of volume expansion can we expect in the next couple of quarters and years? So uh, you are, you, you touched the very important point. Uh, you know, India already has uh, uh, CNG, EV, CBG, and now uh, we are seeing traction happening on LNG for transport. There is a policy clarity that anyone can develop LNG station anywhere in India. So that has provided us this opportunity to, to develop LNG station across the countries. Uh, we see this is a good opportunity because almost 45% of HSD is being consumed by heavy vehicles. There is a benefit on reduction, significant CO2 reduction when a truck uses uh, LNG as compared to HST. So I think there is a very good uh, opportunity. And we also seen Energy Transition Committee has su suggested, of course, recommendations are yet to be approved by the government, but recommendations are clearly showing a trend that there is a suggestion of phased uh, phasing out of a diesel in a calibrated manner with LNG for long haul transport vehicles and buses. So on the LNG side, this is a good development. We are seeing overseas also, there is a huge traction on LNG for transport. And we are uh, already put in our play, uh, plans in place to set up large number of LNG stations to help corporate sector to adopt more and more cleaner fuels for their trans heavy transport vehicles. On the industrial side, uh, while you know government has a vision of growing a share of natural gas from 6% to 15%, uh, fertilizer, power are critical sectors, CGD is very important sector. But in our view, MSME is one more hidden jewel that it could consume huge amount of a natural gas uh, in India if every MSME is supported to adopt uh, the pipe natural gas for their industrial uses. This will make India more cleaner. This will bring the uh, government vision to the reality, going from 6% to 15%. This will play a major role. So we see a huge traction of a demand on both PNG and CNG side. We are also seeing 
uh, consumers preferring CNG as the more sustainable fuel. Uh, OEMs bringing out more and more model on CNG. This is a good story and good development for CGD sector. Lani, thanks so much for making time and speaking with us. Appreciate you joining us today. But on that note, we are slipping into a very short break as well. Uh, with the news, the market has recovered and stabilized a bit. But we'll track the last 30 minutes of the session when we come back. Head of Equity, that Anand Rati is here to discuss more. Uh, Varun, uh, uh, what are your thoughts on some of these large cap uh, pharma names? Sun Pharma will be out with the earnings uh, shortly, I mean right after the uh, after the market hours, but the sense is that many of these large cap companies may continue with strong performance. Lupin and DRL, remember, hiked their guidance last quarter, Aurobindo and Sun were good. Do you think that that kind of momentum will continue this quarter? So I completely agree with you on this point. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me again on your show. Uh, the thing which is happening in the US is that uh, what, what we understand is that pharma companies, uh, pharma distributors are giving an extremely positive view on the ground situation. They are mentioning on uh, price erosion just not looking to happen at least for the next couple of years. So that's a very positive outlook which is coming from there. We also saw Sun Pharma's Taro business reporting and they reported a very healthy performance. So it's visible that US is looking uh, quite promising and all of these names should do very well. So as you mentioned rightly, Sun Pharma is one of the names, Aurobindo, Zydus Life, etc. They are looking very nice. So uh, I would completely agree with your point. And as such also as a house, we are focusing more on larger caps than mid caps in the, uh, in the current scenario. Yeah. What about infrastructure as a theme? And I would uh, request my producers to pull up IRB infrastructure and a one-month chart at that. That stock is up around 60%. Today as well, it's seeing quite a bit of spike. NBCC is another stock which is seeing quite a bit of up move while rest of the market is a bit of a tumble. And then HCC is the other one which is uh, a bit of a turnaround story. People are calling it that. That stock is up around 42%. Varun, would you attribute this purely to a pre-budget move or structurally as well? There is case and value in some of these infrastructure names. See, if you see on a macro standpoint, our country has moved up leaps and bounds when it comes to infrastructure. And it might be any infrastructure. Right now, we're talking about we all play infra companies. And obviously, they're doing very well. Uh, the biggest theme which is going on in the country right now is balance sheets getting delivered, com com companies trying to get off the debts uh, from their books, which was which has been the issue of the past of these companies. So that has been happening. Plus, there is so much that we're seeing as development in our country, right? So I, I don't think so. It's only a pre-budget move. It's it's for real, the things which are happening on the ground, the way these companies have been uh, doing their business now. And, and the outlook seems extremely promising to me. So I remain extremely po positive on the infra theme as well in the country. Uh, Varun, what are you looking at as far as uh, this uh, lenders are con concerned, but beyond the banks, microfinance, some of the housing finance companies, or maybe some you know, India Bull housing kind of company which are trying to resurrect itself or this morning Muthut Microfin was there on our channel talking about 35-40% kind of growth. Anything you like there? See, we have seen a very sharp rally in the microfinance names, right? If we see for the last couple of years, they have been in a very, very strong run. So I would be a little skeptical on the microfinance side for now, uh, considering the fact that these are cyclical plays and... Uh, there has been a kind of a rally which we have seen and uh, uh, these are places where you will see time and again some pressure on asset quality which will keep coming. So I would keep uh, myself a little caution. I'm not saying there's any worry right now, but uh, will not be extremely positive on these names for uh, uh, on these uh, for now. Uh, but yeah, housing finance companies still look quite promising. The kind of uh, run we are seeing uh, in terms of how real estate sales are happening in the country. Uh, and at every level, be it uh, be it at the premium uh, segment or or at the lowest strata. So uh, we are seeing a very, very strong demand in terms of real estate. And that will clearly reflect in these housing companies. And uh, uh, scenario in terms of uh, collection, etc. has also been quite good. We are seeing uh, uh, we are seeing asset quality levels, uh, asset quality being quite fine with them. So and these are these are not expensive names at all. So these are the, this is 
definitely among the NBFC is a very good place to be in. The market is actually slipping as we speak and pull up the intraday chart of AU Small as well as PNB Housing. Want to check if the reading on my charts is correct because there seems to be a bit of a knock on AU Small Finance Bank. Okay, no, so it's just pretty much flat at this point of time. But since we're talking about Muthut uh, FinCorp, let's also listen into the management as to what they were saying about that 30-35% growth because they had come out at the start of the year with a clearly laid out map as to what the FI24 guidance is and they've largely been on track. Listen in. We have grown for the last, if you look at uh, the five quarters at a CAGR growth rate of around 34%, uh, we believe that uh, we can continue to consistently deliver that growth rate. So that will uh, continue in the coming years. And our growth that is coming is uh, basically coming on the back of uh, expansion of our distribution network. Uh, so we have reached around four, 1,424 branches now. Uh, we have added around 250 branches this financial year. Uh, our, for the full financial year, the target was uh, 1,400 branches. We have exceeded that already. Uh, so we have put in the infrastructure in place in terms of our growth and expansion already. And so our uh, growth is coming from uh, expansion of distribution network and also acquiring new customers. Plus the use of technology, uh, we are using our Mahila Mitra app, uh, which has been downloaded by almost uh, 1.5 million customers. Um, even as we speak, 9% gains coming in over there. Uh, Varun, uh, what are your top picks as far as the metal pipe company the concerned? Uh, Venus uh, Prince Pipe came out with the results. Man Industries is uh, surging 12% ahead of the QIP. I mean, in general, we've seen that these metal pipe companies are doing well on volume front. Uh, do you have any top names? Do you study this space? So we have coverage on the one name as of now. Uh, we have coverage on Venus Pipes. And yeah, we remain very bullish on the name. So they're doing extremely good business. Their uh, growth rates have been very sharp. Their uh, capex, which was uh, going on, has been completed. And they're delivering absolutely on what they've been talking about. So they're... Uh, their deliverance has been very good. We have seen the numbers being again very strong as they reported. So it's a result of the same that you're seeing, the kind of demand trajectory which has been there and how the company is also delivering. So yeah, it's a combination of two and we remain very bullish on it. So blue star flashing for you on the screen and it seems like a beat versus street estimates at least on the top line. So the stock is seeing a bit of a perk up. And the other one is Coromander International. That's taken a bit of a nose dive and that's because the profitability dipped by 56% year on year. The revenue is also down 34% and the numbers are below the street expectation and that's why that 8% cut. But let's shift focus and take it across to Shara to get a sense as to what's the latest buzz from the dealing room Shara today. In focus is iShare Motors and what we are hearing from the dealer room is a couple of long only funds and a certain domestic institutions are seeing buying in the stock. Now importantly the stock has gone up past its 250 day moving average as well and even the volumes have picked up over the last two trading sessions. Now looking at it the strong rollover numbers have also been coming when it comes to the auto segment and recently the Q3 numbers also came from the company where the margins actually beat the consensus estimates as well and strong results were also posted. Now, of course, apart from this, the DEI is already invested in the company, include the names such as UTI Mutual Fund as well as SBI Mutual Fund. And we also did a couple of channel checks and it's expected that the company can be a beneficiary from an announcement from the interim budget as well. So, of course, apart from this important factor, also, the importantly, the January sales would be coming on 1st of February and that is something which the market will be looking forward to. Motors is something which is being discussed in the dealing room, but Maruti is also all set to come out with its Q3 results and uh, Shristi is here to talk. Okay, she'll be joining shortly. Uh, what do you make of Maruti at this juncture, Varun? We were also, you know, getting a story just earlier that this trouble at Toyota also could have a rub-off, negative rub-off for Maruti in the extreme near term because there is a lot of activity between Toyota and Maruti. Maruti, with its own badging, sells a lot of Toyota products. So, do you think uh, at this current valuation, is it attractive buy or avoid right now? See, uh, we have seen a very strong rally in passenger vehicles which has happened. They have, so again, it's a cyclical play. We have seen the kind of demand which was there. Uh, PVs as such has, has played over the entire rally which was there. 
I don't see uh, any material upside in Maruti from here. It's a great structural play. If we talk with a perspective of two, three years, etc., then yes, Maruti is still a great buy. Uh, do I see it compounding by say around fifteen percent plus uh, every year? It will. But uh, if you're talking about what I would be really excited about, would be say something in two wheelers. I've been mentioning about this. I'm again mentioning. I'm very bullish on Hero Motor Corp, and I still remain very positive on the name. Uh, two wheelers is definitely just in the beginning of the up cycle. Uh, you've just started the numbers. You, you've just started seeing the numbers coming now, where the growth uh, and all is coming much better than what we are seeing. So I would be more positive on two wheelers than four wheelers for now. And in that, I would be more uh, positive on Hero Motor Corp. Thank you. Two wheelers is the preferred pick right now, but don't lose sight of Tata Motors. That stock is surging quite well. That's up around two and a half percent. But staying with the auto pack, Shristi, as promised, is with us to talk to us about the expectations from Maruti. Hi, Shristi. Hi, so this time we are expecting a decent set from Marty Suzuki because on a YOY basis definitely all the numbers will show a jump but on a sequential basis there will be a decline because the major factor is the volume decline actually 9% on a quarter on quarter basis that's on the back of a, a quite a big uh, jump in the inventory level towards the end of Q3 as well as there were higher discounts other than that the plant shutdown also impacted the production of Marty Suzuki so this time if we t compare the numbers sequentially then there is expected to be a decline of 11% on the top line, Ibita is expected to see a decline of 22% and even the margins expected to see a blip from 13% in Q2 FY24. This time the expectation is 11.3% for us. Other than that, from the profit figure, 2,833 crores is what we are expecting on this front. That will be a decline of 24% sequentially. But the key to note is that starting the Q4, the company has announced the price hikes and they are positive on the demand outlook as well. So we will watch out for more management commentary on the demand outlook for Q4 and the whole year of 2024. How are they looking at the small car segment growing? Other than that, if we talk about the realizations, that's also expected to do better on the back of the price hikes that the company has given. The discounts were quite higher. That is expected to give an impact in quarter three. But going ahead in quarter four, that reason or uh, that impact should subside. Other than that, we'll watch out for the management commentary on the rural recovery and the entry level segments as well. So, um, uh, a, a decent set expected from Marty Suzuki. Indeed, we are expecting a decline in the margin figure on a sequential basis. Back to you. Taken. So those are the expectations from Maruti Suzuki. But Kunal, on the losing end, you also have Manever, which is down 6-7%. And uh, Trent is the other stock which is coming under pressure. What would you recommend on the charts? Yeah, I think both these stocks are now showing signs of uh, big reversals for themselves. So, uh, you know, Manever on one hand, the stock had been reading below its 200 DMA the last... I think one month the stock has uh, cooled off by a margin of I think more than 17 or 18 percent if I'm not wrong maneuver and from 1275 the stock has fallen down to 1020, 1030 levels uh, and still looks uh, you know, quite weak on the charts even at current levels. Today's volume is apparently one of the most, one of the highest volume the stock has seen in the last uh, you know, four or five months of the selling for the stock. So mm -hmm. we'll need to uh, you know, see over the next couple of days whether there is any follow through move or whether the selling gets arrested for the stock here. But trend on the other hand is showing fresh signs of weakness. In fact, on the daily charts, the stock has formed a rising wedge pattern, which is one of the key indications that a major top is in place for the stock. Also on the yearly monthly indicators, you know, uh, you know, a lot of pl plethora of indicators are showing signs of a major top formation for trend on uh, the other hand. So indicative that the stock can uh, you know, see a much more stronger downside over the next uh, possibly couple of months. Actually, I am surprised at Manuver, Anisha, because, you know, uh, the wedding season is again beginning in North. But you don't know the stock on earnings has disappointed and the valuations are very punchy. It's like a polycap. It's a 50, 60 time one year forward. And even on the charts now, historically, it is unable to cross the 1400 mark. Yes. Around because 1400 I mean, tops out. Valuations have gone to 70, 80 70, times. 70, 80 so, times, yeah. I mean, obviously, you need but to But you remember the narrative when the IPO came? Which was? Which was that it's the most technologically savvy company on mm -hmm. just-in-time automation. It was almost getting a Honeywell automation kind of valuation. Right? No, I think it was, it was, of course, that premium organized wedding wear, yes. uh, which was missing for men. The sure. ethnic wear was completely missing. So, Manuver has a great brand name, but you buy everything at a price, right? Yeah, like 60, 70 why. times, there was no room the for error The era was, stock. yeah. Exactly. And twice the stock came to a 1500 yes, mark, yeah. And very recently, very recently, 1400, 1500. That yeah. one on the back of extreme volume. So, you know, ah. when the stock is preparing towards a breakout, 
with extreme volumes, we expect a breakout, but it was a complete reversal for the stock. Mm. Okay, last three minutes of the trading session and for now, the pre-market trades from US are showing a bit of red. Remember, we are watching out for that Fed decision also. So that's an important thing to watch out for over the next couple of days. And of course, there are big earnings and other set of, uh, you know, interesting events lined up. But let's take the BDSC trades. Kunal, what's the BDSC trade? So I'll go with one buy and one sell. Uh, CESC is a buy. The stock looks attractive uh, at 140 plus levels. So targets of 160, stop us at 136. And second is a sell on trend, expecting a strong follow through move on the downside. 29.60 as a target, stop us at 3,200. Okay, what about you, Nuresh? So first is a buy on Concord, which has seen a little bit of a dip, a good entry point here. Stop loss at 8.50, target price of uh, 8.75. Uh, and uh, second is a buy on Bosch with a stop loss at 23.700 and a target price of 24.500. Yes, uh, yes, Varun, uh, from the mid-cap uh, segment, at Anandrati, what are your top ideas which you can share? House calls. So, uh, among the mid caps, we like, uh, so I'll give you top two ideas. We like Sansera Engineering a lot. Uh, this is an interesting uh, uh, auto and sleep play. Uh, one must uh, have this in the portfolio. We are extremely excited on it. And second is uh, Mastek in the IT space. So, these are two names which we really like. We see Mastek as a very interesting turnaround candidate. Two stocks are trading at right now uh, versus where do you see them head? So, you, sorry, you're talking about the valuations? Yeah, valuation picture for both so, of them. So, Sun, Sunsera would be somewhere around 15, 16 times. We easily see this going to 20 to 23 times. We see at least a 40, 50% kind of upside on a 12-month basis. Uh, don't see any challenge there. Uh, in terms of Mastic also, we see at least a 30, 40, 40% kind of upside on a 12-month basis. On that note, we let you go, Varun. Thanks so much for making time and speaking with us. Even Kunal and Nuresh, good to have you. Um, we'll let you go. But it's last one and a half.